Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, we're in Zurich to review the Polaroid SX70. It's a legendary camera that was really revolutionary at the time and was famously used by Andy Warhol, Helmut Newton, and Walker Evans, for instance. Um, when Edwin Land, the um, founder of Polaroid, introduced the camera for the first time in 1972 in April at the annual um, conference of the company, he basically pulled it out of his um, suit pocket, um, opened it up, unfolded it, and took five frames within 10 seconds. And that was really revolutionary at the time because there was no peeling apart, there was automatic perfect development, automatic ejection of the frames, and also um, no residue of the chemicals. Um, today we have of course a large number of enthusiasts for these Polaroid SX70 cameras and we brought um, different versions um, of the camera with us. We have the original one that Jules refurbished and also customized um, with his very own uh, layout as you can see here. Then we have the autofocus sonar version and um, the latest and high-end version that you can get, uh, the so-called Ming edition from Mint cameras that uh, Simon purchased um, a while ago as a birthday gift. We will um, basically take all three cameras through their paces and um, explore Zurich with them. Zurich is, a, we, we believe, a great city to do that, to shoot really expensive film <laughs> in a really expensive city. And yeah, let's see what this Sunday brings. So what all three cameras have in common is a 116 millimeter f8 fixed aperture lens. Um, the differences are, for instance, in the focusing mechanisms. Um, the original Polaroid came with a plain focusing screen and some users complained that it was hard to focus and really to differentiate whether your shot would be in focus or not. So Polaroid introduced a split prism focusing mechanism that works really, really great until today. In 1978, the company introduced the Sonar One Step, which uses um, a sonar system to um, run an autofocus system. And that works also really, really well, except you want to shoot a subject through a piece of glass or a similarly um, transparent object. Um, then it is recommendable to use the manual focus instead, which you can still do on the Sonar One Step, which is really nice. You basically have this little switch here on the front where you can switch from the autofocus to the manual mode. Um, when looking at the shutter speeds, the um, traditional standard version has one um, 175th of a second um, to 10 seconds as um, shutter speed range. And the really, really nice mint version that Simon has comes with a so-called time machine um, that you can place on top. And then that lets you basically choose two automatic modes or um, a complete range of shutter speeds from one two thousandths of a second to one second plus even a bulb and a time mode which is really really nice and of course opens up a lot of creative possibilities. Looking at the films for these cameras um, it's important to distinguish between the original SX70 film um, which is a ISO 160 film that comes with a built-in six volt um, battery and it's important that you should the pose of this camera um, correctly. So um, whenever you're finished a pack, um, ideally you get it out of it and then you just have that piece of battery that unfortunately um, has a lot more power than is typically needed to go through one of the, the um, packs. Um, and you can then um, bring it to any place that typically takes your batteries um, in order to be environmentally conscious here. Um, what is also important is that these cameras come with automatic exposure modes um, that are called electric eye, kind of um, fittingly to the 1970s. Uh, sounds more like out of a sci-fi sci novel. 
Um, so you have that electric eye that takes care of your exposure and you can compensate a little bit with the exposure compensation wheel here on the front, which is important if you, um, for instance, shoot with the mint version, um, the new version where you have this automatic mode for ISO 100 film. Since it's an ISO um, 160 film, actually, it makes sense to um, underexpose it a little bit and to compensate here for that. Um, when we look at the industrial design, uh, industrial design of this, these cameras, what really stands out, the engineering feat that went into creating this single lens reflex mechanism. Um, because uh, as you can imagine, the light needs to take an interesting path here and is actually going through three different mirrors. One of them is a Fresnel um, to create one image that is kind of erect and correct um, through the viewfinder and another one that is going down basically to the film plane. Um, so this is really, really nice. And also the overall construction quality of these cameras is, is really nice and great. Originally, these were, I think, molded plastic pieces. Um, and then there was a special nickel um, chromium alloy added in, on top of it to make it look a little bit more metallic and, and high value. And later versions came in, in ABS material. Um, today's version, the mint version that Simon has, um, really comes in a really nice metal finish and looks uh, beautiful overall. And this also shows how this still a little bit vintage design um, kind of aged over time and still have a really nice modern feel to it. Um, so this is just a quick rundown. Of course, there's much more to know and to learn about these different versions of these cameras, but we wanted to dip our toes basically into the different versions that we brought here to Zurich today. So what are our personal impressions? We both really enjoyed shooting these cameras today here in Zurich. Um, what stands out is the mint version of the camera that gives you, thanks to the time machine feature, all sorts of controls. Um, as a professional photographer or a more ambitious amateur, um, you can really set the shutter speeds that you need. You can potentially do long exposures, um, doing night photography, for instance, like Simon did in the past. But what is important to note here is that the time machine accessory only really works with these mint cameras that have been completely re reworked on the inside um, in order for the electronics then to support a one two thousandths of a um, second shutter speed for instance. Um, what also is remarkable is that the quality of the lens um, with real glass um, really creates a different result on the Polaroid film than the typical plasticky Polaroid cameras do and also that you can focus them correctly, either manually focusing or using the sonar version with autofocus. You can really see that, um, and nevertheless, it's still Polaroid film. Um, so there is still an element of surprise. It's not a perfect sharpness. You can, you can see that um, when you go closer to these um, results. Um, it's not comparable to a 6x6 um, Hasselblad lens or something similar in terms of resolution and details. What is also remarkable is their overall handling. Um, so you can easily open them up and close them up again. And especially on a city trip like ours or when you're traveling, this is really, really great to have a relatively compact camera just around your neck. And the only downside really is the, the cost involved in the film material. So you should be very conscious of the um, shots you're taking because every time it's really 
more than two euros being involved. On the other hand, if you look at uh, a 35 millimeter film or medium format film, you always have, of course, the cost of the roll of film plus the added cost of the development. And here you basically get your, your finished product out of the camera. So looking at that, it's still um, okay. And also when comparing it to the original prices, this may be worth mentioning, um, the original um, camera uh, cost around, I think, 150 or 60 US dollars. And a pack of film with 10 shots back then was um, $6.90, which would um, translate into 1,014 uh, euros, uh, US dollars for the uh, camera and around 43 US dollars in today's uh, dollars, of course, um, corrected for inflation. And that already gives you an idea, okay, maybe the prices are not that bad <laughs> in, in today's times. So overall, we really enjoyed it. We can highly recommend taking a look at the cameras and especially the mint cameras. Um, so either the refurbished vintage ones or the really rebuilt ones that um, Simon has here, that high-end version is also really worth um, taking a look if you're serious about shooting Polaroids. So thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Polaroid SX70 and our tour here around Zurich on uh, this Sunday. If you did, please remember to like this video, maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.